location was given to us. Obviously, we were thrilled when we first walked the site, but the, the, the actual site was the result of uh, negotiations between the Venner Institute and the University of California, San Diego, and they had set that aside for, for university-affiliated research institutes. We wanted to be right on the campus of the University of California, San Diego, because of the opportunities of collaborating with uh, scientists in the health sciences part of the campus, down at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, who do the same sort of environmental microbiology research that, that we do. It was really a, a, a perfect match for us. Also folks in bioengineering, lots of opportunities to collaborate on, on campus. It was a great site in terms, of, in terms of the potential it offered and the orientation and all of the, because it's oriented roughly east-west, uh, all of that was working in our favor, but in terms of trying to house the need for parking and the program on the site, it was a very, very tight site. We needed to accommodate uh, a little bit in excess of 100 uh, cars parking, and that was mandated by the university in their agreement with, with uh, Venter. We explored all kinds of options. We were forced to put parking under the building, and even there we raised the building up on a podium slightly so that we could passively ventilate the garage. There's no you know, fans in the garage. It's actually pass you know, it's open on the sides enough to get ventilation through there. In addition, in the basement, there's bike parking, there's bathrooms with showers, so people can ride their bikes, change, and then come up into the building. Well, the requirements on the site were that we not release any water from the building site into that ecological reserve that lies below it, and that's actually one of the best preserved ecological niches all along the California coast for that particular ecosystem. And so we had to be really, really careful. It had already been compromised, obviously, in certain places, closer to the water and down below. But the idea was that these sites at the top of that would not release any runoff water at all. And so we had to capture, that was a requirement when we started working on the project, that we capture all of the uh, building runoff on the site. Of course, it was an undeveloped site, and we were going to cover much of the site with building. And so we had, to, we had to come up with a strategy to deal with that, which we did. And we went beyond that, obviously, because Craig's, one of Craig's intents was to, was to reuse that water, to recycle that water, both for, uh, not for potable uses yet. We're capable of doing that in the future if we're ever allowed uh, by the water district, but capturing it all, storing it, and, and reusing it uh, for, both irrigation and for uh, non-potable uses within the building itself. So on rainwater collection and reuse, the building is set up to collect the site water, the rooftop water, and the paved courtyard. So all of the surfaces on the site are uh, drained into the rainwater cistern that then can be used either for irrigation or for toilet flushing. Of course, when we use it for toilet flushing, we filter and use UV light treatment on, on the water so that when it goes into the toilet, it's clean water and, and safe. The water coming off the toilets and urinals does go to the sewer, um, except for there is the potential to divert to do some research.